The Challenge of the Yukon. Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes a trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Though the ice still glazed the lake and snow covered everything, there were definite signs of approaching spring. The Yukon days were longer and brighter, and the sun at times felt warm on the prospector's face. It was early morning when Sergeant Preston sat in Pat Gallagher's cabin having breakfast. You had to come around the shore of the lake, didn't you? Yeah. That's the only reason I hate to see spring come. I could shorten my trip by 20 miles if I could come straight across. But it's too dangerous now. Bad holes frozen over with thin ice and covered with snow. The ice has been dangerous for over a week. Drink some more tea and warm yourself while you put some salt pork in the griddle. Thanks, Pat. Mmm, this tastes good. <laughs> Listen to King. Don't tell me it's more visitors I'm having. <laughs> You're the first one who's been here in three weeks. I wonder what he's working at. What's the matter, King? He's looking out at the lake. What? Look, there's a man crossing the lake, the fool. Doesn't he know he'll break through? Hey, you! Hello! He can't hear you. He's too far away and his ears are covered. we got to stop him before he reaches that thin ice. Come on, Pat. My dog team's ready. We'll catch him. I'm afraid you won't be in time. I'd better bring a pole in case he breaks through. King, old fella, see that man out there? Well, after him, boy. Catch him. Go on, boy, that's it. Hurry, Pat. I'm coming. I've sent King on ahead. We may catch him in time. Here's the pole. I'll throw it on the sled. On your Malamutes! The man had a long lead on Preston, but Preston's dog team was fast, and King was faster. The great dog sped across the ice in huge leaps as he pursued the foolhardy stranger. Suddenly, a cry of horror broke from the lips of Preston and was echoed by Pat. There goes the ice. He's gone through. Poor devil. Save preservers, he'll drown sure. Faster, you Malamutes. Faster. King will try and save him if we can only make it in time. Without him furs and clothes, he won't have a chance. Unless King can hold him up some way. Faster, you Malamutes. Look, there goes King into the water after him. Pat, we've got to get there in time. King hesitated only a second before leaping into the icy water. Swimming powerfully, he reached the struggling man who grasped frantically at the heavy fur of King's neck. Hurry, Pat. King's holding him up. Watch that ice to the edge, sir. Bring that pole. Here it is. Keep your feet kicking, man, and hang on to the dog. This way, King. Now you, grab the end of this pole and let go of the dog. Pat, help me pull him in. There now, just a little more. Watch out, Pat. That ice is breaking at the edge. Over this way. I've got him. You get King. Here, King. Over this way. Here, boy. Now up. There you are, fella. Good boy. I sure owe my life to that Malamute. Gosh, what an animal. I ain't never seen such a big fella. He held me up like nothing. My wet clothes would have pulled me down in a minute if it hadn't been for him. Well, why in thunder did you try to cross that lake this time of the year? Everybody knows how dangerous it is. <laughs> I guess I ought to be grateful for being alive. Sergeant, what would you take for that dog? I guess maybe I should retire him for the rest of his life as a reward. You couldn't buy him for any kind of money. Anyway, being retired would be pure punishment to King. Well, gosh, I ought to do something for him. Say, hand me that dripping money belt, will you, partner? I know just the present I'm going to give him. Back in my claim, I found a nugget that looked just like a dog's head. You're going to fasten it on his collar, and it will take care of him in his old age. <laughs> this money belt alone must have almost sunk you. <laughs> you sure struck it rich somewhere. You're right, partner. I was heading back to the States with more gold than you ever clapped your eyes on. Well, look here. Here. Wait, wait. Hey, somebody's robbed me. What's the matter? Lead slugs and bullets. Uh -huh. 
There ain't any gold in there at all. All my dust and all my nuggets gone. Maybe you'd better tell me just what happened to you last night. What did you say? Well, when I hit town, the first person I seen was an old partner of mine, Jake Pierce. I hadn't seen him since I first come to the Yukon, almost ten years ago. You weren't in very good company, Pete. That you weren't. Jake Pierce is the worst spalpeen that was ever born a woman. Well, I hadn't seen him for years, and anyway, I stayed at his cabin two days, and we celebrated my luck. Well, last night we had a final wind-up, and towards the end of the evening, a man come in. He looked like a half. Man, we want to see you, Muskie. It's my old partner, Pete Luscombe. Hi. Mm. Yeah, Muskie's been trapped around here for years, Pete. He can tell you just a trail to take out of here tomorrow. <laughs> Have a drink, Muskie. I'd uh, like a little information. I ain't familiar around these parts. Me? I trap all over country. Where do you go tomorrow? Well, I want to go to Land's End and catch a boat from there. You take trail south, across Lake Tohachi. That save you 20... 30 miles. Is the ice all right, Muskie? Me come cross with team this morning. All solid for a week more. Well, that's good news. That'll save me a day, maybe. Sure. Now well, you won't have to start so early. Now, come on. We'll fill them up again, and we'll drink to your rosy future. Well, I guess I should have gone to bed, but I had a couple of drinks more with them, and I couldn't do anything else, seeing as they was drinking to my future. Do you remember what happened after that? All of a sudden, I got so sleepy, I couldn't hold up my head. The murder and rats. They put something in your glass, they did. Jake put me to bed, I guess. I didn't know nothing till he woke me up this morning and joked about it. Do you know exactly how much you had in the money belt, Pete? Oh, it was many years' work. I had five pouches of dust alone, not counting the nuggets. <sighs> my grandmother's ghost. And spending your time with riffraff like Jake and Muskie. Well, the trouble is, Pete, you have no proof they took your gold. Yeah, I guess you're right, Sergeant. It's only my word again theirs. Pete, I have an idea. <laughs> that evening in the Golden Pheasant Cafe, Jake Pierce was talking earnestly to Jim Kane, a prospector. Yeah, but Jim, you just got back from your claim. <laughs> you ain't gonna need your dog team. I'll pay you a good price for it. I ain't hankering to sell my team to you, Jake. I've seen you handle dogs before, and I ain't aiming to put my animals in your hand for any kind of money. Uh, maybe you'd be interested if I threw in this nugget. It's the shape of a dog's head and... Uh... Hello, How's your trip? Hi, Sergeant. Hello, boys. How are you? Yeah, there's Sergeant Preston and right... Why, that's Pete. Hi there, Sergeant. Hello, Kane. How are you, Jake? Uh, fine. Uh, well, well, Pete, you're, you're back. Uh, hello, Jake. Yeah, I'm back again. I just happened to meet up with the sergeant here this morning, and he said that that half-breed didn't know what he was talking about last night. The lake ain't safe to cross, so I come back to town to try and pick up a dog team. I'll need it if I've got to check all them extra miles around the lake. Know anybody with a dog team for sale? Pete says he has plenty of money. Jake's just been trying to buy my uh, We'll talk about that later, Kane. Uh, let's, uh, uh, let's all have a drink. Well, maybe we better go over to your cabin first, Jake. I want to get some dust out of my money belt. I'm running a little short of cash. Oh, you don't have to do that. I got plenty. I'll let you have all you need. Ah, come on. What'll you have? Better count well, me out. I have to get back to my cabin and feed the dogs. I'll see you later. Hey, hey, so good night. Sergeant. Good night, boys. Well, sir, I'm Pete Lascom. I don't believe I met you. I'm Jim Kane. Uh, Pete's an old partner of mine, Kane. Yeah. Uh, did I hear you say that you had some dogs for sale? No. You just heard that Jake wanted to buy them. They ain't for sale. Well, maybe you'd consider renting them to me. I'm going to Land's End and I'm taking a boat from there. I'd see that you'd get them back. Well, now I, uh, I might be interested in the kind of proposition. Uh, I... Pete, I, I just remember I, I got to see somebody. Uh, stay here. I'll, I'll be right back. Remember, you're bunking with me tonight. Well, sure, Jake. I'll wait right here for you. Jake rushed to his cabin at the edge of town. Muskie was strapping up the last pack containing Jake's belongings when he entered. You get dog team? No, Muskie, everything's off. I hide them packs. Something wrong? Uh, Pete's back. He didn't try to cross lake? Uh, that blasted Mount, he stopped him. He came back to get a dog team. He know we robbed him? Uh, no, not yet. He ain't opened his money belt since we done it. Maybe we better go right now. Yeah, uh, he'd suspect something for sure if I beat it now. I got a better plan. He's going to run a dog team from Kane and plans to take off early tomorrow morning. If we could get rid of him tonight, 
We could take the team ourselves, and everybody will think he left with it. Get rid of him? You mean my knife? <laughs> it's better than a gun. A shot might bring trouble. We could put him on sled, then bury him somewhere. Now, Muskie, you hide in that closet behind them curtains. I'll bring Pete back here. And when he's in the right spot, uh, <laughs> you know what to do. It wasn't long before Jake brought Pete back to the cabin with Kane's dog, Dean. Pete was nervous. He knew something was about to happen. But he also knew that he was under the eye of Preston somewhere in the shadows. Preston, with King at his heels, drifted silently behind them, keeping out of sight. Hey, here we are. Oh, that. Oh. Yeah, don't worry about betting down these critters, Pete. I'll tend to them later. Now you're all ready to take off early. Yeah, that was a good idea, bringing the dogs here tonight. Fix the nightcap for us first, and then you can hit the hay. It's stuffy in this place. Mind if I open a window for a few minutes? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'll, I'll get some glasses. Come on, pull up a chair, Pete. Here's your drink. Quietly, Preston crept to the open window, his revolver drawn, and with King at his side. Pete sat with his back to the curtained closet. The oil lamp on the table cast weird shadows on the walls. Minutes dragged by, and Preston watched, every nerve tense. Suddenly, his eyes were drawn to the curtains behind Pete. They were parting slowly, revealing Musky with his knife drawn, creeping silently toward Pete. Jake was talking loudly to cover any sound Musky might make. Oh, I'm glad you was able to talk Kane into wrecking you that team. It'll make the job a lot easier. Oh! Holy Jupiter! What was that? Get those hands up, Jake. I've got you covered. Pasting that half breed almost knifed me. Oh, my shoulder! You can't blame me for this, Preston. I didn't know Muskie was there. You could see him as plainly as I could. Keep those hands up. Take that gun away from him, Pete. The lamp! Get him, Preston! He's going out the front door. Must, must get going to your house. Come on, King. <laughs> Missed him, King. After him, boy. Go get him. Jake, riding the runners of the sled, sped over the frozen ground like an arrow. The dogs, terrified by the shots, raced along frantically. But King, Preston's huge Malamute, pursued them swiftly, covering the ground as silently as a shadow. Oh, mush! Mush! Faster! Faster! Keep going, you devils! Faster! Suddenly, out of the darkness behind him, a gray shape hurtled through the air, straight at Jake's soul. Help! Help! Get down, you! We're coming, Jake! Call him, boy! Help! Get down, you! Get down, and tell him! Come, King! Come! Good work, King! All right, boy, I'll take over. Here, you, give me that gun. I'll get up and start walking. One funny move, and I'll let King finish the job. The next day, three people sat at the fire in Pat Gallagher's cabin on Lake Tohachi. King, the great Malamute, rested his head contentedly on Preston's knee as Preston fastened his collar. On the collar, a huge nugget the shape of a dog's head gleamed in the firelight. Well, King, old boy, you're looking mighty dressed up with this. Sure, and it's a nice thing for you to be doing, Pete, giving him such a fine present. Well, it's little enough compared to what he did for me. Well, that's his job, Pete, isn't it, fella? <laughs> if every time he did a good job, he got a nugget, he'd be a walking gold mine, that he would. <laughs> well, he's more than a gold mine to me. There you are, boy, your collar's fixed. <laughs> now I guess the case is closed. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Al Neal speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network. <laughs>